Excellent. You raise your right hand, please. Do you, do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury? Testimony about the will be the truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Now, before we begin, uh, well, you anticipated my first uh, request, which is uh, to keep your mask off. It, it just that it'll be easier. easier to hear you. If you feel a need that you got to put it back on, feel free. But Thank you. The important thing is that we be able to hear you, and so what we're going to do is start to make sure uh, we can be we can hear you. We're going to have you state your full name, spell each of your names. Okay. Um, my name is Courtney. C O U R T E N E Y Batya B A T Y A Ross R O S S. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Ross, can you just tell the jurors, not your address, but generally where you live? Yes, I live in Northeast Minneapolis. How long have you been in the Northeast Minneapolis area? My entire life. I was born and raised. And um, can you tell the jurors how old you are? I'm 45 years old. <laughs> Seems like a strange question. But <laughs> there is a reason for it. It's okay. So. And uh, do you have any children? I have two boys. Okay. And Miss um, Ross, did you know um, George Floyd? Yes. When did you meet George Floyd? I met Floyd in August of 2017. And you refer to him as Floyd? All the time. That's how you just refer to him all the time? Yes. And, uh, you know, in court, we prefer to use Mr. Floyd. Um, so as much as you can, do that. But I understand Floyd is just how you knew him, right? Sure. All right. And so what, when was it that you first met Mr. Floyd? May I tell the story? Sure. Okay. Uh, it's one of my favorite stories to tell. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Ms. Ross, just so you know, if you feel like you need to just take a moment to collect yourself, feel free. We'll, we're in no rush here. Right? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> in uh, August of 2017, I had a gotten off work one night. I, uh, I worked at a coffee shop for 22 years now, um, part-time. And I was tired <laughs> and I just cleaned up and closed up the shop and I went to go visit my son's father who was staying at um, Harbor Lights, the Salvation Army. Uh, shelter. He had had some difficulties and was staying there. I uh, I entered Harbor Lights, and when you visit there, you have to uh, ask for a person to come down if you're visiting them. And so, I had the receptionist call him down, but. He didn't seem to be coming down, so I waited in the lobby, and um, I wanted to talk to him about our son's birthday. Um, excuse me. I was pretty upset, and I started kind of fussing in the corner of the lobby. And uh, at one point, <laughs> Floyd came up to me. And uh, <laughs> Floyd has this great, deep southern voice, raspy. <laughs> He's like, sis, you okay, sis? And I wasn't okay. I said, no, I'm, I'm 
I'm just waiting for my son's father. <laughs> Sorry. He said, um, well, can I pray with you? We've been through so much, my sons and I. And this kind person just to come up to me and say, can I pray with you? When I felt alone in this lobby, it was so sweet. And at the time, I had lost a lot of faith in God. Miss Ross, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I'm just going to want to maybe help with a few questions, okay? Sure. Um, at, at that point, did you know what Mr. Floyd was doing there at, at the Salvation Army? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> he worked there as a security guard. Okay. And so he came up to you and tried to comfort you? Yes. Okay. And... Uh, and was that uh, the beginning of your relationship? Well, not that part. <laughs> that was just Floyd. Afterwards, um, he had asked me who my son's father was, and I said, you know, we're, we're, we're co-parent and we're, um, we're not in a relationship, and that's when his I like to say his voice dropped like two levels, mm -hmm. even though it was deep already. And he, he asked me um, if he could get my number. And we had our first kiss in the lobby. And that's when our relationship started. And after that, um, how close did you become? Um, we were very close. And um, so, I'm not sure you told us when this was. Do you recall roughly, you know, not the date, but the year at least? In August of 2017. Okay. And um, up until his death, did you continue to be in a relationship with him? Yes. Can you describe, you know, how, how close you, how often you saw each other during those three years? Uh, just about every day we saw each other as much as we possibly could. Were there times when you weren't as close as other times? We had, you know, sometimes just like all couples, we argued sometimes and, you know, might have taken a break, but. Like most couples. But like most couples, I assume. <laughs>